Now let's look at a, another type of carbohydrate and these are called the disaccharides. So we already looked at the monosaccharides, meaning simple sugar, one sugar. Could almost figure out that disaccharide means two sugars. And here we have two of our monosaccharides. So disaccharide is a combination of two monosaccharides that we just looked at. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna combine these two. We're gonna combine glucose, one monosaccharide, with fructose, another monosaccharide. And when we put these two together, these are going to form the following disaccharide. And it will form what we call a sucrose. Now, with the, um, the two, so I've already drawn here our glucose molecule that we just looked at. And here is our fructose molecule. Now be careful of the shape here. We have a hexagonal shape. Here we've got a pentagon shape, but we still have six carbon sugars. As we said here at each point, one, two, three, four points within our shape, our pentagon here, uh, carbons, but we've got our four, fifth carbon over here, our sixth carbon over here, still a total of six carbon monosaccharides. So, but now when we put together, when we combine um, two monosaccharides together, one of the great properties of, of monosaccharides is the fact, and disaccharides for that matter, is the fact that they are considered soluble in water, right? They're soluble in water because of these OHs, right? These OH functional groups, these are called hydroxyl groups, right? And they pretty much form hydrogen bonds really easily with molecules of water. But now, when they come together, it's not the formation of this hydrogen bond that actually causes these two uh, monosaccharides to join together to form our disaccharide. It is actually an actual reaction. And notice here, I drew the of these two hydroxyl groups in between the two sugars, I drew them in blue because that's what's going to be responsible. And now it doesn't really matter whether I, whether I use the OH here or this OH and then just the H. But what's happening here is to form this bond, we need to remove water. Think about if you're losing water as, a, as an individual, right? You're exercising, you lose water, you're becoming very dehydrated, right? You're losing water. And the reaction that actually occurs here is called also a dehydration reaction because we are forming this bond based on removing of water. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this water, this uh, the OH functional group on one sugar and the H of the other. So what this is what's going to happen when we remove them. So I'm going to erase them. And now by erasing them, a bond is, becomes available. So all of a sudden now, we form a bond between the two sugars as such. And I'm going to kind of just kind of connect it here this way, but I'm gonna kind of simplify it just to kind of make it a look a lot neater. But because this O lost one of the H's, well, there's a bond still available. So for those who understand the chemistry aspect, a bond has been formed, right? Because remember, there was a bond between the O and the H, but without this H, right? If we remove this H, right? There is a bond here that is available. That bond is gonna come from this other sugar. So let me kind of clean this bond up and it will actually look almost as follows. Let me, probably, actually, let's keep the same color, right? So it's an oxygen and it's a covalent bond uh, and it's an oxygen that is connecting really the glucose molecule with that of the fructose molecule, right? So as we said before, uh, disaccharides, just like monosaccharides, they are soluble in water. And that's one of the things that we're gonna look at now when we move on to the next type of carbohydrate. Right? So monosaccharides and disaccharides are both soluble in water because of these hydroxyl functional groups. Right, They form hydrogen bonds with water.